Well, I got a uh, IC in the mail that I've been uh, waiting for from China. Uh, let's take it out of its uh, take it out of its case here. There we go. And my magnifying glass here. It is a WD. 37C65B. Uh, so it's a floppy disk controller. And it is for the uh, for the Zeta. And uh, it goes right there. This is the uh, connector for the floppy. So uh, ICs have a uh, the legs are usually at an angle and that's so that when they're uh, inserted mechanically they they're gripped and squoze, and then, is that a word, squoze? They, they squeeze the legs, and when they put them in the board, then when they release, they spring back a bit and they hold in there, but it uh, makes them difficult to, to do by hand and stuff. So the way, I, the way that I do it is I uh, lay it on its side, and uh, it, it actually leans a little bit um, because the legs are at, at an angle. So I... Uh, Apply some pressure, turn it over, apply some pressure. Now when I sit it on its side, it's kind of vertical. You can kind of tell when the when the legs are kind of going straight up and down instead of uh, sort of sideways. We'll find pin one, find pin one here, and it should oops, should fit the socket easily since we bent the pins. And that feels good. Crutch, we're done. So, we have a uh, fully populated uh, uh, board now. Um, I found a 82C55 uh, in my junk drawer in the garage, so I just popped that in there just to fill it up. Having no intention on using it. It connects to this connector here. Um, it looks as though there is some work that was done to add a hard drive uh, onto this port. Um, and also a, um, a video card, um, which was, I think, the more popular thing to build with the, uh, with the Zeta. Um, I think it handles a keyboard, too, so kind of is self-inclusive. So, but I have no intention on doing that. Uh, I kind of got, uh, interested in the, in the floppy just because it was easy to put on, so, uh, I did buy the, uh, did buy the IC, and... Also from China, I bought a floppy drive. Uh, Six dollars, free shipping, free tax. So <laughs> six bucks is good. It's an NEC. Uh, this is an a FD one two three one M. Um, these uh, only require five volts. Uh, it says here five volts at 0 0.42 amps, so almost half an amp. So they're pretty power hungry, and. Uh, that actually is what uh, this connector is for. They want you to bring in power on the um, uh, the coaxial connector here. And then this little connector was for uh, bringing power off to the floppy drive. Also, the um, board, so if I turn the uh, floppy upside down, you can see it's mounting holes. It has four mounting holes. And uh, those four mounting holes are exactly the uh, same distance here on the uh, on the Zeta. So if one uses some standoffs uh, and mounts the, um, I just have some plastic uh, standoffs in here now that don't don't have threads, um, but they do line up. So it would uh, it would go together like that. And uh, the front is kind of flush with the front of the uh, of the drive, and that's why the LEDs are right angle and the uh, reset switch is right angle, so you can get to them from the front panel. So a lot of a lot of attention to detail on this board. The layout was done really really well. Um, on this particular uh, floppy drive that I bought, it has a uh, uh, a cable that goes in, uh, and it has the famous twist in the cable. Uh, you can see that there. 
there's a part of the cable that's been separated and twisted. Uh, that makes this an A drive. I think if you go straight, it makes it a B drive. So I could crimp on a second connector and make this a double cable. I don't have intentions on doing that right now. And then uh, goes off to the other end. Um, this particular uh, 34-pin, I believe, I believe it's 34, 34-pin 34 has a, uh, one of the pins is filled. Um, and I believe the same was true on this end. So you can't get it backwards. The, the, uh, uh, if you have a pin on your board, it won't uh, let this connector mate. Um, so uh, I had to uh, take the um, um, the Zeta board and uh, there's a pointer. Okay, I don't have a pointer. Uh, here, I'll use my knife. So you can see right here, I've removed the pin, the one, two, third pin in. I sheared that off, and uh, that will allow me to uh, take this connector and uh, attach it to the board, so it'll go on like that. So, uh, one embarrassing thing is I have no three and a half inch floppy disks anymore. I'm going to have to look through all my filing cabinets to see if I actually kept one for some strange reason. Maybe some old piece of software I still have the operating manual for and maybe there's a floppy disk in the back. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I have no floppy floppy disk. Um, so I'll have to maybe go to the junk store and try to find some floppies or uh, I suppose you can still buy them new somewhere. Somewhere must be making them uh, for some strange instruments or something. But anyway, uh, that's the status of the uh, of the Zeta. Um, if you're building a Zeta, um, of course, I showed you the floppy disk controller. Uh, it's not required if all you want to do is run CPM. This is not required. Um, the 8255 is not required. And originally, I took out the uh, uh, timer chip, and it booted also. So that's not required. Um, so one, two, three chips. Um, you don't have to have a real-time clock. That's four chips. Um, I believe you do have to have the um, memory backup chip for the RAM. Um, otherwise, power will not get to the RAM chip. Now, I believe you could probably jump around that um, and send just power this directly and not have to have that chip either. Um, but it would require um, a cut or a jump or both um, in order to do that. So um, I went ahead and installed installed that and the real time clock just for fun um, and uh, uh, the uh, battery backup uh, then uh, keeps the real time clock alive and also keeps the uh, data in the uh, RAM chip um, alive. Okay.